All right, Glenn. So we, you mentioned your wife a few times. I think it's important to to bring her up. Mm-hmm. Um, she can obviously sing. Yeah. Because people <laughs> people She's pay her good. to sing. But for people that don't know, mm-hmm. uh, Glenn's wife is Cindy Heron. Is yeah, that her Cindy, maiden name? Yeah. yeah. Braggs. Yeah. Okay. You might better know her from the group uh, in Vogue. Right. So when you guys met, um, was she, she was singing already, and yeah, they were they were established. They and, were they were at the height of uh, yeah, what they uh, like probably right around 1990. Okay, um, it was I think it was the end of 1990 season um, when we met. And um, how'd you guys meet? Okay, so you're gonna probably <laughs> hear two two stories. You'll hear her <laughs> stories and you'll hear mine. <laughs> As I mentioned before, I, I probably, you know, I was out there doing things. Mm-hmm. I was meeting girls and I was doing things. And uh, so I had this uh, agent. His name was uh, Brian Cohen. He was one of the guys, only really the, one of the guys I trusted in the management office where I, um, w- that I was being represented by. And uh, so he handled all of my stuff. And uh, we had become pretty good friends, uh, he and his wife, Wendy. And so um, I was in Cincinnati. Um, and I get a call from Brian, and he literally, he's you know says, Glenn, I just saw your wife last night. That's those were the words that he told me. And I said, you know, I used to call him BC. I said, BC, what are you talking about? <laughs> so he said, uh, Wendy and I went to the In Vogue concert last night, and um, he didn't even know her name. He said she's the tall one <laughs> in the group. And I was like, uh, and he goes, I'm gonna introduce you guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna get you guys to meet. And I was like, okay, whatever, Brian. So um, a few weeks later, we're in L.A. Uh, to play the Dodgers, and uh, Brian and I go out to get some, uh, some lunch, and I don't know if he planned this out or not, but <laughs> he, we happened to be going to lunch about a few blocks from where Cindy's management office was, and uh, so after we have lunch, he goes, Glenn, we ought to stop by her, her management office. And I said, Brian, you know, that's, that's not the way I operate. She comes to me. I don't go to her. <laughs> um, and so he somehow talked me into going over there. And so we walk into the office, and the secretary was there. Uh, manage, management's na- manager's name was David Lombard. And uh, he and I had since become pretty good friends. But at the time... Uh, when I met him, he was kind of blowing me off. Mm-hmm. And I could tell he was like, yeah, get in line. There's yeah. like a <laughs> list of guys who are coming here to visit to see Cindy, right? And so um, while Brian was talking to David, I was uh, having a conversation with the secretary. And I later found out that um, the secretary had called Cindy and said, hey, I think he's a nice guy. <laughs> but um, so then that was, that was that. And then I got a call from Brian telling me that her management office was requesting a picture from me to send to her. And this was before social media. Mm-hmm. So this was before like even like cell phones. Like I think we had the big brick cell phones at that time. So <laughs> well, you weren't gonna be able to like email, you know, send a yeah. picture. Yeah. And so they were requesting a picture. And I think my my uh, my exact phrase was over my dead body, am I gonna send her a picture <laughs> of me? Right? She wants to know who I am. She can look on the TV, right? Yeah. So um, so then I was like, Brian, that's the end of it. I'm 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 done. So um, about a week or two later, I got a card in the mail, and it was from her. It was from Cindy, and she just uh, she just said, you know, that's just my management. I apologize to my management office looking out for me, and she put her phone number and said, give me a call. So we talked on the phone a few times, and uh, she was in San. She's from San Francisco, and they were there during the off season. Um, they were going to be they were recording their next album, and I had a sister that lived in San Francisco. So Chris Bosio, who was my teammate, was getting married in SAC. And so I, went, I was going to go to his wedding. I was going to come visit my sister in San, San Francisco. Then Cindy and I were going to meet. And so um, when I finally get to San Francisco, I'm at my sister's um, apartment. And uh, Cindy calls me there. And she goes, what are you doing? And I said, um, I'm watching the Bulls on TV. You know, the Michael Jordan. That uh-huh. was like, you know, must-see TV <laughs> back then. And uh, so I'm watching the Bulls on TV, and she goes, you want me to call you back later? And I said, yeah, sure, call me back later. And then I hung up the phone. And then right when I hung up the phone, I said, you idiot, you better <laughs> pick the phone up and call her back. Pick the phone up and call her back. So I did. And uh, so, Good choice. Buddy. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, we decided to meet that night. And so I had this already preconceived 
image of who mm -hmm. she was and how yeah. arrogant and the whole bit was. And she had the same preconceived <laughs> thing about me. And so when we, I, we met at the San Francisco Hilton um, and we went up there and we just, we, we met, talked, we had something to eat and I was expecting not to be there very long. And we ended up being there about four hours wow. talking. So, um, after about, after the, probably the first 15 or 20 minutes, I realized, you know, she wasn't the person that I thought she was and that, um, that she was pretty cool. And, cool. uh, so. And how long you guys been married now? We've been married. So, so I, I got to finish the story. Okay. So we, so we actually, um, we weren't sure where we, when we were going to be able to see each other again after that, because they were getting ready to go on tour. And then I went back down south to uh, San Bernardino with my family, and then she came in the next weekend, and uh, we met. And then so we got really tight after that, and then so we ended up getting engaged six months later, wow. and we got married six months after that. So wow. we've been married 26 years. 26 years. Yeah. Yeah. And so met and married within a year. Yeah. That's my wife and I's story too. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah we just, well, I guess you just know. When you, you know, when you know, you, you know. know. You know, yeah. yeah. Okay, Glenn, I want to <clears throat> dive a little deeper uh, and not into you, but into who supported you. You know, I think we, we look at athletes and it's, again, we just look at that athlete. Who was, uh, who was it in your life that really came alongside you and kind of discipled you and helped you get to that place? I know you mentioned Chapel. Was there somebody somebody during that time that was really kind of helping, guiding, leading you? Well, yeah. Um, during that time, um, Dudley was very instrumental. Um, he basically, um, and he, he, he'll he tell a story about, um, I had just, I think I'd come into town to play um, um, the Reds, I mean, to, to play the Dodgers. And um, he and I and Cindy met at Cindy's little apartment. And he uh, basically... Walk me through, you know, you know, if Jesus is the Lord of your life and, you know, basically um, witnessed to me at that point. And so he's he's just been very instrumental at that point. I mean, I had a lot of uh, um, assistance, you know, growing up with my parents, um, just being, you know, the great parents that they were. But I think what kind of got me there was, you know, obviously meeting Cindy and her walk at the time and, and then meeting Dudley. And Dudley is like a guy that just, you know, he just, um, you know, Jesus is just pouring out of him all the time. And, um, and, and so he was very instrumental. And then, you know, starting the 10 Hillcrest way back when, when mm -hmm. there was only, you know, 300 people there. Yeah. And, um, and so, yeah, he was definitely a, a big part of me being able to really find who I was as a Christian man and having that good example, uh, through him, uh, of what I needed to be. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. What about anybody in the locker room during those times? I mean, what about, uh, playing in Japan? You know, you're, you're kind of out of your element over there and. You know, there you, was, you know, there was a guy, um, he actually used to be a member of our church. Uh, he lives out in um, Dana Point now, uh, goes to Greg Laurie's church now, um, uh, Mark for Julian. I don't know if you know that mm -hmm. name, but he was a member at our church a long time. And wow, man, during, during the, I was going through a really huge transition when I went from to play here in the U.S. to go to Japan. And um, man, he, he was just amazing. He was sending me scriptures and... Back then, it was all facts. So <laughs> you're would, getting facts. Yes, scriptures he would fax over. me uh, scriptures, and then from time to time, we would get on the phone and um, and and we would talk. And then when I'd come in the off season, we'd have Bible studies at his house. And uh, so, yeah, he was he was, uh, and and even today, he's still still instrumental, uh, even though they live down down south, but. Uh, he was he's uh, was really amazing during that time because it was it was a it was a struggle being I had we Cindy and I had just gotten married mm -hmm. and three months later I was off to Japan and she was going to be touring with Luther Vandross and um, and then during that time she got pregnant and uh, so it was just a lot of stuff going on and um, I was uh, you know thousands of miles away from home and from her and um, and so it was just, I had a few people, Dudley and Mark, who were kind of helping me to stay, uh, you know, grounded. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. yeah. Cause I know going overseas can be, can yes. be a really challenging yeah. without the internet and all that type of the, stuff. There was none of that. I can remember, there was none uh, of that. 
so this is going to be 99, 2000 when I, when I got out of school and was over overseas and the internet had just come out and mm -hmm. they had like, it was dial up. Mm -hmm. But I remember just listening to, they had some, you could find some pastors, Ravi Zacharias was mm -hmm. one I used to just listen to and, and online. It really was nice because I couldn't talk and the language right. and the barrier and stuff. But while well, right. at least I you had that, powerful. I had, yeah. I literally had to listen to, um, uh, MacArthur, okay. um, John MacArthur's, uh, cassette tapes. Wow. Yeah. Well, so, I'm, I'm jealous now. I mean, yeah. with, with social media and Netflix, mm -hmm. so I should have been the one inventing Netflix. I used to have my mom record stuff on VHS, uh -huh. like shows I used to like to watch, and she would she would mail them down. Yep, same same here. Man, same that, here. man. Yeah. They don't know the struggle. That's man. right, man. <laughs> they don't know <laughs> the struggle. Like I couldn't I could only make phone calls at certain times and for a certain length of time because it was so expensive. But mm. you know, even during that time our our you know, our phone bill was over a thousand dollars. So it was like uh, you know, now you can just send a text yeah. or you can, you for know, free. Oh yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, man. So, uh, you know, you're a world series champion mm -hmm. with the reds. Yeah. Uh, I see you got your ring. Mm -hmm. Let us see that bad boy there. Yep. Yeah. You don't get to see, don't get to see that every you day. Off, you learn, yeah. You, I know. I don't you, know what you, size finger you have. That's well, a, that's uh, you got some 14 and a half right whoa, there. 14. All right. So it fits. It fits. Thanks, Glenn. That's a nice. <laughs> that's a nice gift you brought me. So uh, I've held a an MLB ring and I've held a basketball championship ring. Mm -hmm. So I need to find a football player. I've yeah, never, I've never held a yeah held a football ring before. That's cool. Yeah. Um, and then I don't think people know this, or if they're listening in America, but you you are a, a big deal in in Japan. I oh, mean, they, yeah. they still invite you. They still invite you back. Oh, I, yeah. I'll see stuff post online all the time. And, yeah. And they, they know who you are. How was what was that like? I mean, just to be in the kind of that a much bigger star in a in in Japan. It was it was uh, it was great. I mean, when I um, after I got acclimated to it, it was it was great. I mean, I got to be honest. Coming from the U.S. and going over to Japan to play, I was pretty cocky, thinking I was just going to just light the place up. Mm. And and I struggled for about the first two months there. Again. God's showing me, <laughs> you know, settle down, young man. Um, and um, so I actually, um, I, I think the the managers were like worried that they might have signed the wrong guy. Mm. I, was, I think, you no, know, spring training over there is two months. Wow. So you have a month of spring training in Okinawa, then you come back to the mainland, and you have another month of spring training. So those first two months, I think I batted at about 120. Yikes. And uh, I did hit a home run in my first at bat, and it was all downhill from there. <laughs> but, um, you know, but then after that, I started to get acclimated. There was just some adjustments that needed to be made, and, um, and so it was a lot of fun. And, it, and you know, playing there... The games are like a college football atmosphere. You know, they're they're chanting your name and they're mm -hmm. beating drums and it's like a it's just a rah rah type of thing. And so it's really was a lot of fun. And we traveled by train everywhere we went. So everywhere I everywhere I go, I'm like you know two feet taller <laughs> than everybody else, and they, they want to put their hands up next to mine to yeah. see how big my hands are and stuff. And um, so you, you kind of do feel a little bit like a rock star over there. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And I just literally, I mean, still today. They still feature me in video games over there. I just got um, another one that they just they're gonna start up next year that they're gonna be featuring me in a video game. So that's cool. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. life like character. Yeah, that, that's that's cool. neat. Um, I know you were telling me about the traveling, staying in beds. They had to put extra stuff on your yeah, <laughs> extended yeah, on your beds. It was the beds were too short, the desks were too small. Um, you know, every I was hitting my head everywhere. It was just like a, I mean. <laughs> It was, but I mean, when you look back on it, you can laugh about it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, God, God puts you in a lot of different situations for a lot of different reasons. And, um, and I, I just, it, everything we go through in our lives, I think is meant to help us to be able to get through other situations. And it was a struggle. And there were times when I was just like, I was questioning whether I should be there or not, but, um, it ended up being such a, a great experience for me. I was there four years and. Um, met a lot of really good friends and even some believers over there, which yeah. is not something that uh, um, that is really pushed over there in Japan very much. And uh, there's not really a lot of belief in uh, God there, but um, I've met some believers over there that were really yeah. great. And um, some some guys from the 
the military base that were nearby that would help us out with uh, you know meals and stuff like that, which That's was cool. really great. That's yeah, cool. so it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, you were eating sushi before sushi was cool. Oh, I, I've <laughs> always loved sushi. I went yeah. to the University of Hawaii, so oh, yeah. yeah, I I love you know sushi even before I got there. Yeah. But Japanese, real Japanese sushi is a little bit different than Japanese sushi here in yeah, America. I bet. I bet. But uh, but it was uh, fantastic. They would laugh at me because I like to put wasabi and soy sauce and dip but uh-huh. they were like that is not the way you're supposed to do it <laughs> but so yeah yeah that's cool um so one thing you're known for is breaking bats mm-hmm. now i know the one video you, you know guys break their bats over their knees and i think you've done that too yeah I have. yeah okay mm-hmm. um which looking at you is it's like the rest of us breaking a breaking a twig, but you also broke a bat on your backswing. I did that, and that that's yeah. that's amazing. You ever you, that ever happened in Japan too? Actually, no. Um, it never did happen in Japan. The bats in Japan were a little bit different. The wood there, mm. um, I can't even pronounce the name, but there was a certain type of wood that they used. Like I could literally use this bat for at bat after at bat. I mean, it was, I could use it for thirty at bats. The thing wouldn't break. And, What's about uh, in the major leagues? Over I, here? Mine usually would last a few games. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but uh, I would I went through a lot of bats in uh, in the in the U.S. But when I was in Milwaukee, I had I'd done it a few times, and I did it a few times in Cincinnati. But what made that one so you know everybody was so bl- blown away by it is because if you watch the video. Uh, Tim McCarver and Jack Buck were, um, was it Jack Buck? <laughs> Tim McCarver and Jack Buck, they were both uh, talking about how big and strong I was as I was walking to the plate. Yeah. And then the very first swing I take, I snapped the bat. And that was almost <laughs> like they were setting it up. Yeah. Uh, so, and it was during the World Series. So yeah, everybody was watching. watching so, yeah. yeah so it was you are, man. It's, it's, a, it's a video game. Yeah. You're out there snapping, yeah. snapping bats. Right. Uh, right. No, that's cool. They, they got to see that. It, it, really, it really is impressive. So something we like to do is called rapid fire. Mm-hmm. All right. So turn your brain off. We're just going to ask you some questions. Mm-hmm. And uh, let's get to know Glenn Braggs a little bit. Uh, Milwaukee or Cincinnati. I'm going to upset some people, but Cincinnati. Okay. Uh, favorite city in Japan? Yokohama. Yeah. Why? Mm-hmm. why? Um, I visited, we, we, when we played in Japan, we literally played all over the whole country. So we would, sometimes we'd play home games in Kyushu. Sometimes we'd play home games in, down in the south of Japan. And, um, and so every city, I got a chance to visit all the cities and, and Yokohama was just the most, it was the, it's called the city on the bay mm. and it was just the, the most beautiful place to be. And, um, I just felt comfortable there. I'm noticing there. something, Hawaii, Southern California, hey, hey. you know, I don't know how you live in Cincinnati or, <laughs> right. or, or <laughs> Milwaukee. Right. Well, Mil- well, Cincinnati was good. Milwaukee yeah. was a little bit more tough. Okay. Little tough. Yeah. Uh, most memorable home run. Probably my uh, first major league home run. Um, I hit a home run off of Charlie Huff, a knuckleballer, mm-hmm. and then I ended up hitting a second home run that day. But um, the you know the one that I think you know, a lot of people don't even know this. I hit the farthest home run ever in when I was in uh, I was playing rookie ball in uh, Paintsville, Kentucky, and people still talk about this home run. It's probably the farthest one I ever hit in my life. Yeah. But, um, they didn't have trackers back then. No, how far they you, did how not. How far they you did think not. you hit this thing? They did not. But um, probably my first major league home run, um, and then I've had some pretty big shots that I hit in uh, in, J- in Japan mm-hmm. too. So, okay. Yeah. All right. This question's not going to be as friendly, but uh, worst strikeout. <laughs> oh, jeez. Come on. Man. If, if you hit home runs, I know there's some strikeouts um, going on. You know, as a baseball player, we don't remember the strikeouts. <laughs> um. That one, I, I mean, any time I struck out, I didn't like it. Yeah. I, I don't have one in mind that was that like bigger out. than the other. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. We'll let we'll let it slide. Yeah. That one was. Somebody yeah. do some research for us and find. Right. It. Right. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they can find a lot of them. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Your uh, your favorite all time baseball player. Uh, oh well, um, well, George Foster was my favorite player. So I it was I got to, so I started my career in Milwaukee, and then I got traded to the Reds. I was like stoked, and because that's where my favorite player mm. played. Um, I had a few. I mean, uh, Willie McCovey and uh, you know Willie Mays. Those guys were um, were my idols too. But I, for some reason, George Foster was my favorite player. I just kind of connected with him and yeah. then um we got a chance to play in cincinnati and we got the chance to wear his uh, jersey uniform no wow. so that's it's cool. pretty cool that's really yeah. neat that's really neat uh favorite all-time teammate who um 
Let me just think. You know, probably, um, probably Eric Davis. Yeah, probably Eric Davis. I mean, Eric was was they used to call him Mister, you know, Mister Red. Mm-hmm. But he was he was everything to everybody, man. He was uh, you know great player, great leader, uh, funny guy off the you know you know in the clubhouse. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just he was just one of my uh, one of the, one of my favorite players I ever watch play. He was so fast. He could yeah. do a lot of things. He could hit home runs. He can steal bases, throw guys out. Um, so probably my favorite player to play that's with. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, was, he was fun to watch. Yeah, yeah I, re- I remember forty four, right? Yep, yep, that's right. Um, I th- I think this is fascinating. I mean, Eric Davis a little bit. He's not probably as big as you. He hit home runs, mm-hmm. but I mean, just you stole bases too. I did. Yeah. You know, stealing bases and hitting home runs is not something. Yeah. You, you, you kind of get together in a, in a package. Yeah, I was. Uh, you know, at the a lot of people don't know this, but I, when I got, I was like, um, when I got called up to the big leagues, I was probably I was you know had been top minor league player, you know, throughout my whole uh, minor league career. Milwaukee had the number one farm system at that time, mm-hmm. and I was a top prospect in their farm system. And so, um, you know, I could, uh, you know, basically I had what they call five-tool player. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I prided myself on being able to do it all, hit for average, hit for, you know, yeah. power, be able to play defense and, you know, score bases. Yeah. yeah. I know you robbed a few home runs in your day. Uh, yeah, yeah, actually, uh, the the biggest one, probably my the biggest play ever in my career was the home run I took from Carmelo Martinez in the uh, in the National League Championship Series, which put us into the World Series. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, uh, favorite in vogue song. Oh wow! <laughs> uh, I didn't think I was going to ask you about that, huh? Can I say I don't know the names of the other song? No, I'm, just, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You can uh, sing it for us. Uh, no, I will not do that. <laughs> don't let go is probably one of my favorite, but the free your mind and never, you know, never gonna get it and hold on. All of those are all yeah, great songs. Those are classics. Well. Yeah. Uh, what What would be Cindy's favorite song? Ooh, uh, probably pro- probably hold on. Probably hold on. Hold on was their number one number mm-hmm. one hit of all time, and I think she was the lead on that song. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, how much can you bench press right now? Oh, wow. Probably not that much. I have a bad shoulder right now. But um, I was yesterday I was doing some decline, and I just only went up to around 225, and I did it about 15 times. So if you... If You're you, ready for the NFL combine, So if you, if, you, okay, well, if, you, if you do that out for, like, max, for one rep max, that probably equals to probably somewhere, somewhere around 300. What's the most you ever... You ever 350 was one at one time, okay. Yeah, okay. Um, what's your favorite baseball team to follow today? Probably the Reds, probably the Reds. I mean, I don't like any other teams in the league. I don't even <laughs> like that. Like, anytime someone wears a Dodger jersey or hat in the gym, I'm like getting on their case all the time. Yeah, it's tough when you live in LA, yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And they're and they've been good, right? Uh, who's your favorite player to watch? These days, um, let's see. Probably, that's a good question. Let me think about this for a minute. Um, probably, probably Nolan Arenado. Um, I think he's with the Rockies. Yeah, okay. he's short uh, shortstop, third baseman. The guy is freaking phenomenal, mm-hmm. man. Um, he hits for power and just cranks it out there and just plays defense like you wouldn't believe. So probably one of my favorite yeah. players to watch today. Okay, yeah. cool. All right, as we kind of wrap up, I mean, just being uh, obviously in the limelight, a professional mm-hmm. athlete, you know, married to to a you know world class singer. Mm-hmm. What would you uh, just as a father, athlete, coach? What what would you tell people listening? I mean, just just about how you connect your faith. Uh, to your game and your life and, and all that you do, what, what would you? What would one thing you want to leave them with? <sighs> um, I think uh, you, if there's if there's if there's one thing that I think I've learned is to to not try to control things so much myself. And um, as, I think as men generally, we're you know. We're taskmasters, we're problem solvers, and we just feel like we want to do things all on our own power and our own strength. And I think that's been the biggest struggle for me is to try to be able to let go and let God do the work that he, um, that he needs to be. So I think as far as, the, it, it, not that I've done this in the past a lot, but I think 
currently where I'm at right now with my walk is just trying to let God just and Jesus just be um, the leader in my life mm-hmm. so that I can be the leader that I can be for my family and in turn where I work. That's good. That's good. I think uh, here is a great story in the Bible. In fact, it's the only miracle listed in all four Gospels is the uh, when Jesus feeds the 5,000. Mm-hmm. And it is a young boy that gives the the loaves and the fish. Mm-hmm. And he's it's just a small lunch for a boy. And it turns out to feed five, ten thousand 10,000 people mm-hmm. because he put it in Jesus' hands. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think we forget about that in that right. story, that boy, and how powerful, you know, just to, to give that up and, and to be obedient it's and true. faithful. Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's, that's, a that's the hard. That's the hard. I think it's hard for us men to do that because, uh, you know, we feel like we have the power and the strength in our, in our own will to do it ourselves. And I'm, I'm finding the more I let go, the, the, the more things, you know, are, they go a little smoother. Yeah, that's a good, that's know. a good word. We all, yeah. we all need to hear that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, before you go, yeah. we're asking our guests to uh, to turn us on to another professional athlete, yeah. whether current or past, uh, right. someone that's living for the Lord that you think would just would have a, have a good word to, to, to share with all our listeners. Yeah, so a guy that I was thinking of is, um, I, I didn't play with this guy, but um, every year I go back and do uh, something called Reds Fantasy Camp, and um, so... They bring back former pros that were, that are with the Reds. Um, usually, typically, about twenty four of us come back, and we we end up being the coaches for twelve different teams. Uh, they split us in two two coaches per team, and uh, this camp, uh, one hundred and fifty six guys come to this camp to be part of this uh, this mm-hmm. um, this spring kind of a what they call a fantasy camp. And uh, this player, Eddie Tobinsey, he was uh, he was a uh, catcher for the Reds. Okay. Um, I think from the 90s until the 2000s, and he and I have really connected a lot, and he is a very strong believer. Um, I think you, I think you'd love talking with him okay. um, and, and having him share his faith. Uh, he's uh, he shared that with me as well, and uh, so I think he'd be a great. I think the listeners would love to hear from All him. All right, all and, right, Eddie. and I think and I think he'd be willing to do it too. Great. All right, yeah. Eddie, we, we're we're coming for you. Okay. I think I need to come to fantasy camp. Man, you would you <laughs> it's, would. It's, it's been a while. Yeah. Uh, do you know what it's all about? No, I think so. go ahead. So the fantasy camp is has been so, wannabes. <laughs> well, it's, so you have to be at least thirty, and then it, you can be any. You can go all the way up to. I had a guy on my team that was in his seventies. Wow. And um, and so these guys, they pay to come to this camp, and they literally get treated like major league players. Okay. So we we evaluate them on day one. We have a draft. So we have a number one, number two, number three draft pick on our team. Um, so these guys get drafted to our team. And then they play. Uh, they play double headers for four or five straight days. Fine. And then, then then there's a tournament at the end. Okay. Um, and then the, there's my first year there. My team won the championship. So um, you know, I had the, they they give out the MVP award. They give out the, cool. the Cy Young award. They give out the most uh, impressive defensive player. Are other teams um, around the so league doing this? All pretty much all the teams do it. But the Reds and the Yankees are the teams that have. Probably the best camps, okay. and uh, like I said, two years ago we had 156 guys at this camp, wow. and last year I think there was around 144 guys. So, okay. um, and uh, it's a week of playing baseball. Like they they have their complete Reds uniform with their name on the back, and then it gets ironed and pressed and put in their locker to, every nice. single day. They have nice. full training room facilities uh, with trainers t- taping them up and massaging them and everything so they get treated like a major leaguer for <laughs> one week too bad all that so. stuff doesn't help you help you hit a 90 mile <laughs> that's <basketball>. true <laughs> it's true but they play against each other yeah, so yeah, i mean good. it's it's yeah. really how a many, lot of how fun. many people are getting pelted upside the head <laughs> every year every year we have a few injuries every year we have a few hammies injuries. and uh, yeah hit by we, pitch. we had a we had a torn achilles last year oh, so yeah that's tough yeah. Man, Glenn, thanks for being on the show, man. Thank you for having Always, me. Always, yeah. Appreciate it. Lessons to you. You All as right. well.